How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going down another community questions video. However, it should be quite interesting. It's one that we have covered in the past. However, it was one that you guys really enjoyed and I thought was a really cool idea. We are going to be taking a look at unwritten rules in RuneScape 3. So these will be things that kind of everyone just does without even thinking about it and it just becomes a thing that everyone already does without anyone explaining why and it all just kind of catches on. These may not apply to everybody so keep that in mind. If you do not do these, of course not everybody in the entire game is going to be doing everything the exact same but these are common things and these are of course all comments from the community themselves so if you enjoy this video do leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's get going shall we okay so comment number one says always always tell others how good or bad your rng is at specific bosses this is a, <laughs> a conversation that is like spread around a lot this happens all the time and i think it's a big discussion point for a lot of people they always say oh right mate my rng at this boss is absolutely terrible i am this many kills dry and it's just ridiculous like why why is everybody else getting the drops and i'm not but then the next day they could be saying to somebody else oh, actually yeah no ed3 wasn't too bad i actually finished the log before even like 55 kill count so it's not that bad i'm quite happy with that this these sort of conversations like happen all the time and i know they do because they happen with myself all the freaking time as well mainly when i actually bring up the fact that you know i'm about 650 hard mode care pack kills dry without a single drop or even a split or anything like that and uh you know care pack where's 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 the staff piece dude where's where's the staff piece we've had a couple of codexes Where's, where's the staff piece? But then at the same time, I did finish my ambassador log at about 47 kill count. And then six kills later, I did end up getting three pieces in six kills. Those of you who watched that stream or those of you who saw the video of that will remember that probably. Seeing as six kills for about 3.5 billion GP was definitely a good day. But comparing your dry streaks and other people's dry streaks against your own is definitely 100% a very common thing that happens in game. I mean, it's probably because the whole chase after drops and get your dopamine hit is like a big part of the PVM community. So I'm pretty sure that that's probably got a big part to do with it. And it doesn't surprise me. So for the PVMers out there, do you guys do this? Let me know in the comments. I'll be interested in finding out. So this next one is one that is kind of important for the game and I think that it doesn't always get followed but it is kind of expected and I would say that it's definitely expected and most of you will agree but it says this game is for fun and to grow with friends. Don't scam drops. Make sure you split the rares evenly and if it doesn't split nicely then the couple of GP that one person loses should be the one who sells it. So the first bit of this definitely 100% don't scam drops don't scam your friends like especially when you've been pvm with someone for ages and you get one big drop so you could be doing raksha for example with someone and you've been pvming with them for i don't know months or something like that and you've been talking to them you're in a clan with them and you've built like a like a friendship with them a little bit right so you're doing pvm you're doing raksha and then you you get a greater ricochet drop most people would automatically be like cool let's go to the grand exchange let's sell this thing off and let's split the money like that's what's expected that's what's automatically like there everyone's like yeah that's 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 what happens that's how it works right and it doesn't even really need to be agreed on in the first place normally like if you if you don't specifically say we're doing keeps then the idea is that you're going to be doing a split so when the person then teleports away or i guess if you're the one that got the drop you teleport away holy crap is that that's not a good thing like it's just not good don't scam people don't scam your friends it's not worth it for all you know you could have got another greater ricochet the next 10 20 kills with your friend and then that way you've pretty much just got a greater ricochet each and it just makes it more fun pvming with friends doing bosses with like duos and groups and stuff like it's so much more fun and exciting than just doing everything solo but if you are known for scamming people and running off with drops when the other person is expecting a split then people are just not going to want to pvm with you and you could change your name and stuff but honestly there's still ways of knowing like that it's you and i know a few people that will chase you down in clans and make sure the other clan that you join and stuff is new just just don't scam your friends drop don't scam anyone's drop if you pvm with someone randomly like i pvm with people on stream like random people that i've never met before that will join me on stream and if they get a drop they still split like i don't even have to say like i will split and if i if i get a drop i'll still split with them so this is definitely one that is kind of an unwritten rule i completely agree uh, but as for the last bit with the uh, extra gp that someone loses through the one who sells it uh, i'm not too sure what people normally do with that i do normally give it to, to the other person so I'll, if it's like i don't know a few thousand either way or like 100k either way i would just give them that 100k and it just makes it a bit easier for me to work out but also like why i just give it to them it's fine it's no problem 
Here's an old one for you. This is one that's not very relevant today, especially in RuneScape 3. <laughs> but uh, it says, Back in the day, no saving was a common rule while PKing. Always follow for drop parties, even if you know it's a scam. So this comment is like focusing on something very old. And it's kind of before EOC, before PKing was just completely like, ruined and just, just made dead, basically. But I figured I would include it in here for you guys that wanted a nostalgia hit because it could be quite quite nice for you guys to be like, oh, yeah, actually, that I remember that. Because that's exactly what I thought when I did this. And I... I thought back to when I used to try and PvP, and when I say try, I meant like I was like, yeah, this is gonna be good. I'm gonna gonna be able to kill people and take their items. It's gonna be great. And I'd be dead, and I'd die again and again and again, and I'd give up and just just like freak this game. That's pretty much what my PvP was like. But no saving or like people calling you a safer during pvp back in the day was definitely something that happened quite a lot it really did basically for those of you who don't know being a safer or saving is actually just basically eating too much food eating to the point where you couldn't ever possibly die and then as soon as you run out of food you just disappear you just teleport away but always making sure you're on full health like you'll have about five health missing or something then you'll eat a shark which obviously you don't need to eat a shark with five health missing but because you don't want to die and you're just not risking it in the slightest then you eat up and people would call you a safer for that as for the follow for drop parties, even when you know it's a scam, this actually <laughs> happened quite a lot. Like, you knew it was a scam as soon as someone was running around the Grand Exchange saying, drop party, drop party, drop party. Uh, but just in the off chance, just on the off chance that it wasn't a scam, you, there was a lot of people following them around. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people still didn't follow them. But a lot of people did. A lot of people were like, yeah, you, just in case. You just never know. They could be definitely doing it. And then when they lead 50 people to the wilderness, you're like, eh. I'm not jumping over there. Nope. No, thank you. Not jumping over there. I didn't bank my items. It's not happening. But that being said, there was a couple of times in the past that there was a, a couple of drop parties that I did follow someone around to, and they actually went to the Falador party room and dropped them. So it's, it could happen. And I guess that's why people actually did it. The next comment says, letting people know they're in the middle of being scammed by someone so that they don't feel what you felt two years ago. So this comment is really good. And I think that most people do this. And I think it's just something that you, you see it happening and you're like, no, we've got to, get, got to let them know. And even though scamming is kind of like way less common these days than it used to be, uh, especially in RuneScape 3 at least, it is still around and you do still see quite a bit of it. Just nowhere near, like it was, it was a full-time thing. Like back in the past, it was a full-time thing. You would have lures and scammers 24-7 on you trying to get you. I think it's still the same in old school RuneScape. Maybe not quite as much, but I'm pretty sure it's still pretty busy in old school RuneScape. But either way, when you see another person, whether you think they would know about it or not, you tend to be like, no, dude, listen, you are being scammed. And the, there's an issue with this though. There's an issue. And the issue is, at the moment, you get so many people that run a scam. Basically, they have someone who comes and like blatantly tries to scam someone and then they'll have someone else message them and they'll say like oh by the way uh, this person's scamming by the way but you can you can take their money off of them you can do this you can anti-lure them you can anti-scam them and all you need to do is this that's what i did earlier i took 50 mil from them and it was really easy and this is all you need to do so they will do that they will have someone else message them trying like to convince them that they can anti-lure them so when you do message someone obviously you're not going to be saying oh go and anti-lure them go and anti-scam them because you're just saying ah oh, you're being scammed by the way but it's still good and worth doing because even if they happen to not have known about it, you just saying, by the way, that guy's trying to scam you, they could assume that you're maybe with them, but it adds that thought to their head of like, oh, actually, yeah, this could this could be a scam. I should be careful. I should bank my items. I should not trade anything. I should probably not just trust them without really thinking much into it. So even just letting people know about it and whether it's they believe you or not adding that thought to them is definitely worth doing but i'm pretty sure that this is in an unwritten rules thing so i'm pretty sure that is a common thing that happens and even myself a little while ago got one of those messages from that guy who tells you to come to the grand exchange because he's quitting the game wants to give you all his money the guy that messages the same people over and over again because he has no memory about 20 minutes ago of what he did and the people that he messaged you know the guy that talks absolutely ridiculously and the way he speaks is like i don't have any idea what the hell you're saying but i can barely like make it out and then he gets someone else to message you and it's definitely him because he talks the same freaking way he's so stupid but he definitely gets people because he's still doing it and he definitely 100 does get them i'm pretty sure he featured in one of my scam videos in the past when he was getting someone there as well and while they didn't fall for it properly they, he did get them all the way around to the back to the wilderness and stuff but yeah i've had him messaging me and i was talking to him trying to get him to like talk to me on discord or something like why do you do this like what does that actually work and find that information for you guys but even then, I had people coming up to me going, no, dude, don't, don't, he's, he's scamming you, he's not giving you anything away, like, just, just warning me, and I was like, I, I know, but I just, I just, it's just, it's just good to see, it's good to see people going out of their way to make sure that you understand that you could possibly be being scammed. 
The next comment says, when looking for an empty world, for example, the abyss or certain slayer creatures, don't crash other people. This comment has 20 likes. 20 likes. Holy crap. I'm, I, can't not, I can't not include this one, right? Like, you guys all agree with this, and it's for good reason. However, I know full well this does not happen. Like, not always. It happens for a lot of people, and I think a lot of people are kind of getting to the point now, because, like, RuneScape 3 is an old old game. RuneScape 3 is not an old game. RuneScape's an old game. RuneScape 3 is like a, like a middle-aged game. <laughs> but RuneScape is an old game, and the people playing RuneScape 3, it's an older community. Like, it's not loads and loads of younger players. It's probably a lot of, like, adults and grown-ups, people with jobs and families and stuff play it as well, and um, I think it makes a big difference for this sort of thing. Back in the day, it would be absolutely 100% if someone locked into your world when you were doing something like this, you knew you were about to get crashed. It used to happen all the time, and it still happens all the time at freaking Sand Crabs and Old School RuneScape. But Old School is a hell of a lot more popular than RuneScape 3 is, uh, so, I mean, it's kind of hard to find worlds on there. However, in RuneScape 3, it still does happen. It still happens, and it's so freaking easy to just change world because likely the next world that you go to will not have anyone on it. Unless it's double XP, the abyss is usually empty for most worlds, and, and even if it's not, there'll be one person and there's two spots. However, there are some places like Slayer Creatures, for example, the Corrupted Scorpions, that are always really busy, especially since I think there's bots there and there's like gold farmers there all the time. So it's kind of hard to find worlds there, right? But it's definitely a good unwritten rule to have to not crash people unless unless you know they're a bot unless you know for certain that they're a bot or like maybe they're a gold farmer and they're real world trading then just go crazy crack on go for it who cares but if it's another player a genuine player and they've been there before you maybe don't go and crash them because it, while you may just be thinking i've been hopping worlds to hop 10 times uh, it's, it's absolutely crap i'm just going to crash this person i could definitely do it i have a scythe they only have like i don't know a, a spear or something i'm just going to crash them who cares i just need to get a spot just think like they now have to hop all that time to, to find another world and they have less gear than you <laughs> like this means more to them than it does to you so maybe just think like yeah maybe i won't crash this person they, they need it and they were here first and it's just like nice to not do that like i say bots and stuff just crack on crash them maybe even report them while you're there no one wants bots in the game get rid okay we're going to end on this one it says gratzes on drops levels pets replying to the gratzes as the person with the drops level or pets and do not crash people in slayer bosses or instances so we've, we've talked about the crashing one but i wanted to include the first part of this anyway the crashing one was the last one but this one Saying, saying grass to people, like whether it's in your clan or whether it's just someone that you, you've seen and just got a drop. But then also the person who got the drop, you, you kind of have to reply or else it's kind of like, oh, why didn't, why didn't they reply? Like, you, you could have said thanks. You could have you could have said awesome or anything like that. <laughs> but honestly, whenever someone in the clan or in like a friend's chat or just your friend gets a drop, that you, you kind of expect to get people PMing you saying grats or you get you kind of expect people to say it in your clan to say grats and th the way this works is it kind of doesn't matter what you get because you could do, be doing Raksha and you could be dry at Raksha for like 300 kills, 400 kills and I tell you what, if Chax is listening, comment down below man, you know exactly how this works because he's about 800 kills dry at Raksha now uh, but <laughs> honestly, um, laceration boots, you could get laceration boots dropped and you will still get loads of grasses in the clan, they're like 1 mil and you're there like, yay, thanks guys <laughs> and I think at this point, it's kind of like a troll for that bit where people comment and say like grats in the clan when they know full well you've just got laceration boots and you're obviously there for great ricochet why wouldn't you be uh, so at the moment just for you guys that might find this a little bit funny Chax does have about 800 i think 850 maybe maybe getting closest to 900 rasha kills now not at a single codex not at a single shadow spike but he's had a hell of a lot of laceration boots so whenever he gets a drop of laceration boots we love it it's absolutely great the clan goes wild we absolutely love it and this is definitely an unwritten rule as well even outside of our clan it happens all the time people say grats no matter what uh, and it's it's good it's nice it's like encouraging it's supportive it, it just makes the game feel like an mmo well that brings us to the end of this video hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did you know what to do leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new thank you so much to the channel members who support the channel that bit extra each and every day it is always very much appreciated of course and your names have been on screen right now other than that thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it and i will see you all in the next one see you later guys bye